want to be that girl that runs my favorite book into the ground. But I'm here to tell you that y'all are never, ever, ever going to hear me stop talking about this book. I'm... Oh, all right. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Shelby in the Book Club. I'm Shelby Monet, and today I want to talk to you about three books that all have the same vibe, um, but are kind of telling different messages. Okay, so I read James by Percival Ever this year, and this is definitely going in my top five favorite books of the year i <laughs> i could go on and on and on and on and on about why this book is so great um i haven't even really done a review video on it because i don't want to spoil the greatness i never not want to talk about books i don't want to spoil this for you but i do have two other books that give a similar vibe um and I haven't done like a recommendations in a long time. So if you like to hear it, here it go. Before we get started, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you share. We're always growing our family. Um, I want to get to like 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I think it's an attainable goal. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's get to it for real this time. Okay. So first, we're starting... I Y'all knew I was starting here. So this is the first book that I've ever read by Percival Everett. This is a retelling of Huck Finn, but you don't need to read Huck Finn before you read this book. Um, I would say maybe do a, like a quick summary of what Huckleberry Finn is about. And that'll do you, an, you just need to know the basics. You don't need to read Huck Finn. If you do read Huck Finn or if you are inclined to, I would say read it after you read James. James follows Huckleberry Finn and Jim, who is the slave in the Huck Finn story, on their journey down the Mississippi, okay? It's largely about survival, but it is also about um, language and the fluency of language and how language can help specifically black people survive okay and there's a lot of conversation about race in this book obviously there's a lot of conversation um about passing right and what's that that is like there's also a lot of conversation about what it is like to take your power back right it is an amazing book it is funny in places it is thought-provoking it is extremely well written. I, I can't tell you. When I, <laughs> when I looked up Percival Everett and I saw that he was a professor, I said, and he should be. And he should be. He should be teaching the children, adult ones, baby ones, how, who it, he needs to be teaching them how to write. He put his ankles in this book. But the thing about reading a really good book is, is it puts other books into perspective for you, right? Sometimes you read stuff and you're like, oh, that immediately reminded me of Let Us Ascend by Jasmine Ward. These two books, they were, they were sisters. Mother, okay, they were sisters. So that make me and Roydale and Avastain, okay, that's going to be for a second. That same grandma. They were sisters. Okay. This is also a conversation about race, right? It is a slave narrative. This tells the story of a slave who is sold um, further down south than what she already was. But it largely talks about grief, right? And what grief looks like. Why these two books are very um, similar to me is because there is this underlying question of what will you do for love? What will love make you do, right? In this one, it's heavy. Um, it, it is, uh, 
a very deep dive into grief um and what life looks like when you are struggling with losing the one person that means so much to you right and getting your power back from that like take letting grief no longer uh have control over you right the other things are both of these are a journey Bo both of these we are following the characters kind of going to their final destination and in that final destination we get character growth we get we see change in thought processes we see change in what they're doing and why they're doing it and all of those things <laughs> okay so that's why these two are very similar amazing writing styles but I think this is a perfect example of how you can tell two different stories um that are similar in some places but use two different techniques right both of these are very deep stories <laughs> James feels lighter and it feels um like witty and funny and it is obviously social commentary where Jasmine Ward gives us like deep elevated writing style like she writes so dang good it's ridiculous like it, it doesn't like the way she strings words together like okay for example for example for example the first sentence in this book is the first weapon I ever held was my mother's hand. Girl, what? Friend. Friend. That's how we starting, right? And it's, um, or, okay, my mama knew the world was sopping with spirit, that you didn't need to go to heaven or hell to witness it. She knew it was all here, and now I know too. Okay? It, it's, a, it, it's a conversation in, in faith, right? But, but this journey is too. And it's about decision making. It's about what do you do with your grief? It's about what do you do with that love that you can't place anymore? Is it going to drive you or is it going to sink you? Right? And then <laughs> the third sister, the third sister is Trinity. I got the book upside down. I'm so dang excited. I got the dang book up upside of back ways. Trinity by Zelda Lockhart. I did do a full review of this. Um, if I can, I'll tag the video. Now, where these two are a journey in the present time where the characters are going, this one, this one is what happens to that grief over generations. <laughs> so we get to see, we tell the story of one family um and how a big thing that happens takes this family on a journey from the south to the north um around the world and and back to the south and what grief and trauma does across a generation of a, like across a family right because the things that you don't heal your babies and them is gonna have to heal i know y'all don't like to think that 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 large but i'm telling you friend what you don't heal your babies and your grandbabies and them is gonna have to heal it now where i say the connection between all of these three are is this book is very very spiritual the same way that let us descend is spiritual <laughs> this book is about learning how to is also about right books are about so many things there's so many layers but this is also a conversation in how do you address address your deities your gods your ancestors your spirits whatever you believe in when grief is whooping your ass and you don't know how to handle it how do you address them how do you go on that journey with them to trust them again to to or maybe to trust them for the first time right how do you do that this is the same in that way we go on this journey and we see the same things happening over and over and over again with this particular family until they figure it out <laughs> until they figure it out until they get that one spiritual baby that is like i'm tired of this grandpa <laughs> i'm tired <laughs> i'm tired of this okay and 
it's a spiritual experience, right? All the things that you ignored that you didn't want to face because the work was too hard. Then there comes that one <laughs> that has to. Okay? So they were all, they were sisters. They were sisters. And I think you should probably read them all in tandem. I think you should, maybe not in tandem. Excuse me. But I think you should read them close together. I think there are things in all three of these books that um are very very beneficial to everybody i think you should read them <laughs> so without further ado if no one had told you today i love you you are kind you are smart you are important i said that before i said these will all be linked down below if you would like to purchase them and read them yourselves i think you absolutely should they are amazing so again if no one's told you today i love you you're kind, you're smart, you're important. Bye, friends.